Throughout the history of aerospace development, the Apollo era of the late 1960s and early 1970s stands out as the most brilliant chapter. Humanity successfully traveled to the moon six times, and 12 astronauts walked on its surface. Back then, many believed that just 50 years later, we'd already be reaching Mars and far beyond. But that future never arrived. Instead, for decades, we remained stuck in low Earth orbit. Spaceflight became predictable, routine, launching satellites, running experiments aboard the International Space Station, studying the cosmos from afar through robotic eyes. And then everything began to change. Right in front of you is the Super Heavy Booster, 233 feet tall, weighing hundreds of tons, descending gently into the massive mechanical arms of the launch tower. It has just completed its mission, delivering Starship, the largest and most powerful spacecraft ever built, into space for critical test flights. Both are creations of SpaceX, a leading private aerospace company led by CEO Elon Musk, and their ultimate goal isn't just to revive the glory days of the Apollo era, it's to go far beyond that, making humanity a multi-planet species, with people not just walking on Mars, but living there, sustainably. To make that vision real, SpaceX is pushing forward with a series of bold, unprecedented upgrades to Starship, turning it from an experimental vehicle into the foundation of humanity's next giant leap. So, what exactly are these upgrades? First and foremost, we have to talk about full reusability, the single feature that has fundamentally reshaped modern rocket design. Take legendary rockets of the past, like Saturn V. It successfully carried out multiple Apollo missions, but it had one unavoidable flaw. It could only fly once. After each launch, it plunged back into the ocean at extreme speed, shattered on impact, and sank to the seafloor. Just like that, a billion-dollar vehicle was gone in seconds. Starship is built on a completely different philosophy. Both the Super Heavy Booster and the Starship spacecraft are designed to return and land, caught directly by the massive mechanical arms of Makazilla after every mission. From there, they're placed onto transport stands, moved into the Mega Bay facilities, inspected, repaired if needed, and then held in standby for the next flight. That process alone saves hundreds of millions of dollars compared to building an entirely new launch vehicle every time. And the impact of this shift is already visible across the industry. Blue Origin's New Glenn, Rocket Lab's Neutron, and multiple next-generation Chinese launch vehicles are all being developed around some level of reusability. Meanwhile, rockets that remain fully expendable are increasingly being pushed out. A clear example is NASA's Space Launch System. Its future has become highly uncertain, especially after a White House proposal earlier this year suggested canceling SLS and Orion after Artemis III due to their extreme costs. Congress later stepped in, allowing the program to continue through Artemis V, but even so, its long-term viability is now in serious question. And that leads to a larger conclusion. In the future, fully reusable launch systems like Starship will attract more investment, evolve faster, and ultimately become the new industry standard for rocket development. So how does reusability relate to sending humans to another planet? In reality, the connection is extremely close and absolutely critical. To understand why, let's take a look at the second major upgrade. SpaceX isn't building just one version of Starship. There will be many variants. We're already familiar with Starship HLS. But beyond that, there will also be Starship Tanker, Starship Depot, and eventually a Mars-optimized Starship. Those are stories for the future. Right now, SpaceX is focusing on upgrading Starship so it can fulfill its role as a Starship tanker, performing in-orbit propellant transfer. In other words, two Starships will dock with each other in space and transfer fuel while operating in an extremely harsh environment. But why is this necessary? To reach low Earth orbit, Starship has to fight Earth's strong gravity and atmospheric drag, requiring a delta V of roughly 9 to 10 kilometers per second. And because Starship is the largest spacecraft ever built, with a dry mass of around 100 to 200 tons, depending on the version, and a payload capacity of 100 to 150 tons, its 1,500 ton Methalox propellant tanks are nearly depleted by the time it reaches orbit. At that point, there's just enough fuel left to deliver the payload, not nearly enough for the next phase of the journey. That's why orbital refueling is essential. 
Typically, this would require 8 to 16 refueling launches, meaning multiple starships would have to fly repeatedly to orbit just to refill the vehicle assigned to the main mission. And without reusability, this process alone would cost billions of dollars, right? Fortunately, SpaceX has another upgrade planned for Starship that makes this entire process far more manageable. And that's the third upgrade, pure, raw power. According to SpaceX, Starship version 3 will be powered by the all-new Raptor 3 engine, which is considered a major leap forward compared to Raptor 2, mainly in three key areas. First, significantly higher thrust, around 280 metric tons of thrust at sea level, up from roughly 230 tons with Raptor 2. Second, lower mass with each engine shedding about 75 to 100 kilograms. And third, an extremely simplified design. Raptor 3 completely eliminates the external secondary heat shield, instead integrating regenerative cooling channels directly into the engine structure. This reduces complex plumbing and greatly improves reliability during repeated reuse. These improvements don't just push the thrust to weight ratio to record levels. They also make the engine easier to mass produce and capable of operating at higher chamber pressures. As a result, Starship version three becomes far more capable than version two, especially for lunar and Mars missions. More specifically, the super heavy booster would now generate a total liftoff thrust of around 10,000 tons of force roughly 2,000 tons more than the previous version. That makes it a true beast, nearly three times more powerful than Saturn V, which produced only about 3,400 tons of thrust. In other words, higher thrust allows Super Heavy to push the Starship upper stage to higher energy trajectories, providing greater excess delta V. This means that, with the same amount of propellant delivered in orbit, Block 3 Starship would require far fewer tanker flights, potentially reducing the number from 8 to 16 launches down to just 4 to 8, depending on the mission. That reduction fundamentally changes what's possible, landing heavy payloads on the moon, building long-term lunar bases, or transporting large numbers of people and massive amounts of cargo to Mars becomes easier, safer, lower risk, and far more economical, turning plans once considered nearly impossible into realistic goals within this decade. So, are you excited about the future, about what Starship might achieve? If you are, drop a one in the comments below. Thank you so much. So, to sum it all up, we're approaching Starship version 3, a vehicle that's fully reusable, low cost to launch, incredibly powerful, massive in scale, and capable of carrying enormous payloads. The question is, could something like this pose a risk to the aerospace industry in the future? The answer is absolutely yes and at an almost alarming level. To understand how, let's first look at Falcon 9, SpaceX's money-printing rocket. In 2025 alone, Falcon 9 flew nearly 180 launches, setting a new record for the highest number of annual launches by a single rocket type. Most of that cadence came from Starlink missions, which have become almost routine and now account for around 90% of the total payload mass delivered to orbit worldwide. And yet, once Starship enters full operational service, it could push Falcon 9 into early retirement. Why? Because Starship can deploy five times more satellites per launch. A typical Falcon 9 mission carries 24 to 30 satellites, while Starship is expected to deploy 100 to 150 satellites in a single flight, thanks to its massive payload bay, the power of six Raptor 3 engines, and the enormous thrust of Super Heavy. On top of that, SpaceX is targeting a launch cost of around $10 million per Starship flight, nearly six times cheaper than a Falcon 9 launch. Think about that for a moment. Six times cheaper, with five times the payload capacity. That's why the entire aerospace industry is already starting to shake, because Starship has the potential to absorb a huge share of future launch customers. And this isn't just a distant what-if. SpaceX has already signed contracts involving Starship. NASA, beyond the HLS contract, has also approved a Launch Services 2 contract modification, adding Starship to the list of launch vehicles eligible for science missions, exploration missions, and Earth-observing satellites. The Space Force has signed on as well, awarding SpaceX $102 million under the Rocket Cargo Program to study the use of Starship for rapid military cargo transport. And private companies are lining up too. Vast Space, for example, 
plans to use Starship to launch its Large Haven 2 modules starting in 2028. And that's exactly why other companies really don't like SpaceX. Take Blue Origin and ULA, for example. Throughout much of 2024, both companies repeatedly submitted comments during the Environmental Impact Statement Review process for LC-39A, arguing that Starship is simply too large. They raised concerns about extreme noise levels, shockwaves, debris, and the potential impact on nearby launch pads, claiming these effects could force them to evacuate personnel and shut down operations during Starship launches. Their biggest fear is launch cadence. With Starship potentially flying up to 44 times per year from LC-39A and possibly even more across Florida, they worry SpaceX could effectively dominate Florida's airspace, disrupting ULA's Vulcan launches and Blue Origin's New Glenn operations. ULA also specifically highlighted the risks of catching the Super Heavy booster at the launch tower, arguing that landing at the pad rather than on offshore drone ships introduces additional safety concerns. That's why Elon Musk fired back with his now famous tweet, Sue Origin, essentially daring them to take legal action if they wanted to. And here's how things have played out so far. In 2025, the FAA released the draft EIS for LC-39A, with the public comment period closing in September. The review process is still ongoing, but more importantly, in December 2025, that the Space Force approved the final EIS and issued a record of decision for SLC-37, officially allowing SpaceX to build two Starship launch pads at the site. The approval also authorizes up to 76 Starship launches per year, and construction has already begun. Despite all that hostility, SpaceX doesn't actually have bad intentions. They're expanding aggressively for one simple reason, to generate revenue. And as you know, the dream of Mars is anything but cheap.